Hi, and welcome to the Revolution Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Oliveira. It's my goal to bring you clear-cut strategies and drills designed to make you and your program better. With that in mind, let's begin. All right, so this week um, we are going to talk about the ABCA conference that I attended last week. Um, um, we're going to talk about my thoughts, my likes and dislikes, as well as some of the takeaways that I got from the conference. My thoughts. Um, so I don't know if anybody else pieced it together, but I thought it was um, almost ironic. Uh, or it's not really ironic, um, but it was weird, you know, because uh, the, this conference would have been in uh, D.C. and uh, my wife and I, you know, we would have been in D.C. And, uh, you know, regardless of your political views, uh, I think it would have been frustrating if you weren't staying at the Gaylord, um, you know, with a 6 p.m. curfew and, and all the chaos that was going on. So, Maybe it was a godsend that um, that we weren't there. Uh, you know, that probably would have had a lot of more chaos. Um, some of the likes. I liked that I could attend a lot of courses, all the courses pretty much at one time. All you have to do is open a new browser um, and or a new uh, tab and go, you know, and you could do pretty much, you could attend almost any conference, both at the same time, uh, you also had accessibility or somewhat accessibility to all the vendors pretty much at any time. Um, some of the dislikes. Uh, so I was trying to listen to the convention on my phone. You know, um, I was actually planning on basically putting it, you know, putting my ear pods on kind of like I have now and just listen to one or two uh, conferences. However, I kept getting kicked off uh, and had to refresh the page. And so, um, uh, you know, that was kind of like a little frustrating. Um, I also missed the camaraderie with uh, a lot of coaches, got missed meeting another, uh, other coaches, you know, pictures that, that I, I've taken over the years with uh, coaches from the other coaches from the convention. I missed that, you know. Um, I also feel bad because I'm sure that the vendors suff suffered. Uh, they, they probably did not, I don't know, you know, I haven't really talked to all of them. I've talked to only a few vendors and the ones that, uh, it just seemed like they're probably going to suffer. Their businesses are going to suffer. Um, I do hope to have some of the vendors on the show soon and help them out the best that I can. Now, this is kind of personal, but I also did not like all the interruptions. You know, when we're at the convention, we're able to pay better attention, you know, write down our notes because we're in a room, uh, you know, full of other coaches. And even if you want to get distracted for a second, you're going to look over to your right, and you're going to see this other coach writing down notes, and you're going to look to your left. And same thing, uh, here you don't have that. Uh, you know, you have the house, you know, um, this is my house. And so you're the house and, uh, you know, my daughter's coming in the room. My, my wife is, uh, asking me to do something. Um, or, you know, the kids are, are, you know, playing movies loud, you know, so it's kind of like a lot of distractions, a lot of stuff going on here. Um, I did miss the conference. Um, now some of the takeaways from, uh, from the convention. Um, some of my favorite uh, sessions that were uninterrupted uh, for the most part um, was uh, catching with uh, Coach Strick Strickland. And um, something that I'm going to start doing this year is, uh, you know, when, when we get to competitive baseball, uh, I'm really scared because, you know, we haven't been able to work with our guys like I normally want to. And so I'm, I'm honestly very nervous about this year. Uh, but 
catch your pop times. Um, I want, you know, um, I want to write their in-game and mid-inning pop times on the lineup card just to stir up some com competition, you know. Um, people, you know, basically athletes like to compete and they like to compete against themselves. So, you know, by writing down a pop time, they might be able to uh, say, you know what, I can beat that time. Watch this. Um, another thing I'm going to try to do, um, and he did say that this one, uh, try it with your catcher, and you're going to find out real fast that they can do it or not. So, but I love this one, and like I said, when I when we get into more competitive baseball, uh, we'll work on this for sure. But this is a relaxation pick, and that is where the catcher is going to catch the ball, and then he is going to look down like he's uh, just literally going to throw the ball down to back to the pitcher but he's going to look down and bam I got you so uh that is uh I really like that one and another takeaway from him that I'm going to try to do um uh for catching or blocking is the Jedi catch um or block drill and he did suggest to use feather light balls for this one and that and this drill uh what he said was um Basically, the catcher closes his eyes and he listens to the to the pitch machine going off, the and uh, and he is going to open his eyes and you know react to the ball. Uh, so that's a good drill, I think, for to that I'm going to start doing with my catchers. The next takeaway was from the. The session with Coach Scales, The Art of the Steel. Man, that was a really good one. Uh, have, the men, you know, have the mentality of a thief. Um, and what he meant by that was, you know, a thief doesn't just, just kind of like haphazard go into a house and he doesn't know if people are there or anything like that. He actually, they actually do their homework. They, they study, they, um, they write down times, you know, that you're gone. They uh, write down uh, basically your tendencies. When do you leave? When when are you home? Uh, uh, what are your likes? When uh, how how often are you getting uh, Amazon packages? They actually know your tendencies because they've done their homework. And so what he said was to know yourself, um, know your weaknesses, your limitations, as well as your strengths. And um, so by knowing yourself. You want to know, you know, uh, from home to first is uh, is 30 yards, basically. And so uh, you want to know your 10 yard times and you want to know your 20 yard times. And you want to know um, your times from first to second, for instance, uh, and second to third, you know. And um, I don't know if you listened to one of the last episodes I did on base running. This is why having cones out and having the guys know where to get as far as a distance is important because now you can you can actually they know the times they'll know the times that it takes for them to go to second base uh off of steel or to third base off of steel um they also need uh the players also need to know the feet per second that they cover uh, how many feet per second do they cover you know it's kind of like miles per hour in a car how many feet per second? That made sense to me. Um, and then uh, something that I really liked that, you know, I'm going to steal this phrase because I've seen it too many times with kids um, where kids slow down to slide and the slide is um, you slide to slow down, not slow down to slide. I really like that phrase. I'm stealing it. Uh, thank you, Coach Scales. Also, uh, know your op uh, opponent. Uh, know your catcher pop times, the exchange rate, the arm rate, I'm sorry, the exchange rating, uh, for instance, um, or the times, you know, uh, for, for basically the catcher catches the ball. How many seconds is he uh, taken to throw the ball back to, to the pitcher? Are they um, engaged or are they just kind of like in motion, you know, because a lot of times you can um, you can take advantage of someone just being in a routine. Uh, so know the exchange rates, the arm rating of the catcher, the pitcher tendencies, and a really good one that I liked um, that I think a lot of people know this, 
but um, a lot of coaches know this, but you know, I, I, I don't know, this is the first time that I hear it this way is know the terrain, um, scout the field actually. Um, uh, you wanna scout the field and look for places where the ball might take a weird hop or scurry away. So scout the field. Uh, anyway, so that was a really good uh, session with uh, Coach Scales. Another good session um, that I really liked, it was an uninterrupted. Uh, so I was able to take some good takeaways there uh, was the basics of developing our development for dynamic pitchers with uh, Coach Wiggs. Now, um, what I took away from that uh, there are a few things that I've already been doing, and there are a few things that I, I will implement um, uh, starting this year, basically. Uh, if you heard the first two episodes, um, my first two episodes, you know that I love explosive stuff. Um, and I've shied away pretty much from long distance um, running. However, he said, hey, you know what? Marry both, use both, um, apply both of them into your program. Uh, and I, I believe that I'm gonna do that. And what he does is he does long distance after a pitcher pitches the next day, they're doing long distance running. Um, and then they move on to explosive running uh, or explosive uh, drills. And I really like that idea because uh, like I said, I've done just, 100% explosive stuff. Um, and I, I believe that that's going to help them with longevity. It's going to help them with uh, endurance. Um, with long toss, uh, go only as far as you can maintain control of your body. Um, you know, I thought that was pretty clear. I like that phrase. I'm using it from now on. Um, something that I've heard from uh, other college coaches before and I really just kind of emphasized, uh, emphasized this in my mind a little bit more. Um, 70 foot changeups. Um, when they come in from long distance throwings, especially the pitchers, have them throw at 70 feet, have them throw a 70 foot changeup uh, so they, that they learn how to, uh, so that they learn how to throw through their target and not, uh, you know, short change it. A lot of guys, you know, they try to throw that change up. Um, they slow down. They slow down their arm speed. They uh, they basically um, change everything about their mechanics, um, you know, because they're trying to get the change up there. However, if they're if they're throwing from a longer distance, uh, especially this change up then what's going to happen is at 60 feet, six inches, they're going to be able to get it there, no problem. Um, learn the touch and feel uh, for the breaking ball at 45 feet. So for the curveball and the slider, get them at 45 feet, learn them, uh, help them to learn that rotation, uh, help them to get the feel for where, where to release that ball. There were also a few hot stoves that I attended. I attended one for catching, pitching, and fielding and base running. Um, and, uh, you know, the one for catching, uh, that was pretty much one of the only ones I was able to attend uh, uninterrupted once again. Uh, so I was able to take a few notes. Um, note, one of the takeaways, uh, things that we already know is uh, know who's on and what they can do. You know, so rate your runners. Are they uh, an A plus runner? Are they uh, a C runner? You know, um, are they awake or are they asleep? Uh, you know, what are they doing on the base pads? Uh, then uh, with catching, change the signs every few innings. Now, I did attend, like I said, a few hot, other hot stoves. I really wanted to uh, listen to the one with infielders as much as I could with Kai Correa. And I love Bill Mazziello. Um, he is one of my favorite infield instructors. Um, but like I said, there were a lot of in-home interrupt uh, distractions or interruptions. So uh, my ability to take notes was not um, where I'd like it to be. Now, one of the vendors that I uh, looked into um, or some of the vendors that I looked into I spoke with Game Changer. Um, I spoke with uh, 
with the Vice President uh, Ken Strenaud. And um, one of the reasons I, I, I wanted to reach out to them is, I'm, you know, I would love to see them merge with Pocket Radar so that the miles per hour will automatically be read um, be read by the by the game changer instead of us having to input it manually. Um, I also wanted to talk to them about adding a pitch locator. You know that way uh, we know you know where what where was the pitch at in the strike zone. Um, you know if we can get that, that would be great. As well as a sequence of pitches. You know something like uh, the first pitch was a uh, you know in and tight on the righty. Um, you know, second pitch was a breaking ball down and away, you know, things like that. You know, I want to know the sequence, you know, just, uh, just so that we know we're able to teach the guys a little bit more about baseball and pitch, pitch sequencing. Um, now he did mention some of the things that, uh, that they've, uh, updated. Um, he also did tell me that those things that I talked about were things that um, they had been uh, discussing. Um, but anyways, these are the newest, the newest details, or I'm sorry, the newest uh, updates that they have. And I'm hoping to have uh, Mr. Stranod on in the, here in the future, just so that we know, um, we can be better hear from them in detail what these things are. But some of the updates are, that you can now um, live stream a game uh, on Game Changer. So that's a really cool feature. I believe you have to have two phones or you know, have, have to have somebody taking the, the iPad, but somebody can also be um, filming the game. Um, there is now a roster rollover. Uh, so that's a good thing. And then there is a pitching spray chart. Basically the balls hit and, you know, you can actually see where the ball was hit, you know, before, however, um, now it tells you, you know, a fastball was hit to up the middle, for instance, you know. Um, so I think having that is going to be great. If, if they can add that, uh, if they can add that pitch locating part uh, locator on, on the screen as well, it's going to be even better. I did try to get on with Hit Tracks and Rapsodo, uh, but I was unsuccessful with those. Um, I also looked into uh, sweat, Lefty Swag Bats, um, which is a training bat. I've actually have one of those that I brought that I bought in 2019 at the convention here in Dallas, Texas, and I've used it with my guys. Um, it's a heavy bat, but it's also very thin, um, so uh, it. And, and it's a little, bit, a little bit longer. So the guys have to learn how to manipulate that bat a little bit. So I like that because when they learn how to manipulate that bat, they go to the regular bat, you know, the 32, 33 inch bat, and it weighs nothing for them. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you heard something that you found practical and that you can use to make you or your program better. Please send any feedback to Revolution Baseball Podcast at yahoo.com. Also, share this episode with other coaches that you think will benefit from it. Thank you for listening. I'm off to the Texas High School Baseball Convention, and I'll see you next week.